Good morning. Uh, I want to welcome to um, Lent day 13. Uh, this is devotion number uh, 12. Uh, since I didn't do one the first time, uh, changed locations a little bit. Um, uh, the, the annex is first, it had um, we had scouts coming in last night, so I moved all of my stuff uh, into the parlor. And now we have UMW happening today, so I decided not to move it all out, set it up, do it, and then have to move it all back. So I just left it um, in the parlor. Um, yesterday, we read the story of uh, Jesus feeding the 5,000 um, out of uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14. Um, it, it begins with actually uh, a little bit of, a, of, of something that's not that part of it. Um, Jesus has heard, has, has discovered that his cousin uh, is, in a way, almost a mentor. Uh, John the Baptist has been executed. He was beheaded by Herod. Um, the story is right before that in Matthew. Uh, and we hear that uh, uh, John's disciples come and tell Jesus. And we know that, that uh, when he heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. Um, and I think one of the things that we need to remember about Jesus is, you know, that's the, the focus of what we're looking at is what do we get out of this? What do, what do we get out of it that we learn that makes us more Christ-like? Um, and, and this is one of those very human things about Jesus. Um, and that is that I believe that he mourns, he grieves for those that are, that are lost. Um, you know, he, he was close to John, uh, at least to some extent. Uh, we know there are stories in there between uh, Jesus and John uh, from the very beginning, from the birth story uh, up to this point where John is beheaded and um, and Jesus, Jesus grieves. And I think that it, it's okay for us uh, to grieve. Uh, I, I know a lot of times people, um, especially when it, when it is a Christian friend or loved one that died, uh, they want to make it out like, oh, it's not a problem. Don't worry about it. They're, gonna, they're in heaven. And, and so, you don't, you know, there's no reason for you to mourn or, or cry or be upset or whatever. But, but Jesus grieved. I mean, that, that was what he was doing. He went away by himself so that he could grieve in private. And, and we see other times when he hears that uh, Lazarus uh, is gone, we, we see that he weeps and um, and it's okay. Grief is okay. Uh, grief is not a bad thing. Um, and then we get into the story of um, the crowd. Um, the, uh, in this story, we know that, that um, that the crowd, Jesus has gone to this deserted place with these, and then the disciples find him and they're heading to this other place. And, and the crowd actually beats him there. They figure out where he's going and, and they, uh, they arrive there before he does. And, and it tells us that he has compassion on them. And then um, the disciples come in and supposedly it is, um, it is evening. It's gotten time now. It's, you know, the sun is beginning to set or whatever. And, and, uh, they don't have, there's no food. Uh, you know, I'm sure that the disciples had food for uh, them and for Jesus, but uh, they didn't have food for, you know, this, we're talking 5,000 men plus, plus, you know, plus women, plus children. So who knows, you know, could be, you know, 10, 15,000 people. Um, and uh, the disciples come to Jesus and want Jesus to send the people all away. Uh, to, to the other towns to, to purchase food. Well, you know, in this area, 10 or 15,000 people is a lot of people. And um, I think that at that point, they're, they're just wanting to, to push the responsibility off on, on um, the people, which in a sense, it is their responsibility. Um, but, uh, but Jesus doesn't go, go like that. Uh, Jesus says... Uh, they do not need to go away. You, you, the disciples, give them something to eat. And the disciples are like, we have nothing. 
You know, we have five loaves of, and two fishes, and we don't fish. We don't get this story here, but we know in other places he's talking about a, a young boy that had these things, or maybe in this case, this was just what that's what the disciples had. Um, uh, and and then Jesus uh, calls the disciples to bring them to him, and he sets everyone down, and and he he breaks the bread, and he he you know breaks the fish. And they pass them, and there's enough for everyone to eat. And and there are some people that want to say, well, it's not really a miracle. The people actually had their own food. That once they sat down on the grass, they pulled it out and started eating, and there weren't that many people that didn't have food. I, I don't believe that. I think these are five thousand hungry uh, people that had no food. And and uh, Jesus, because if if they had had food, Jesus wouldn't have you know wouldn't have needed to feel compassion for them. Um, and I think what this reminds us is that um, we, we have power within us. Uh, there are so many, it, it is so easy for us that when, when some problem arises to simply throw up our hands and say, oh, I can't do anything about that. You know, I can't, I, you know, when, whenever we discover that there are uh, hunger, hunger, there's hunger in our midst, especially right now, um, we tend to just, you know, there, I can't do anything about that. And that's not true. Uh, we have, we have tons of resources. Um, and, and, and the first resource we have is we have the power of Jesus Christ. And we don't, we don't go like, like I said before, that tends to be the last resort, you know, uh, normally for us, we'd run around and do absolutely everything we possibly could do to make, you know, try to get something to work out. And then if it wasn't going to happen, then we might stop and pray to Jesus. And, and, uh, but, but I think that we, we have the ability, you know, the, the, the scripture tells us that, that all it takes is the faith the size of a mustard seed. And we can move mountains. We can do great things with that kind of faith. And, and, and it's not, but of course, it's not just us. It's not just, well, I can do it. It's us with Christ. And, and I think it, as far as us attempting to become more like Christ, you know, it was not Christ, uh, although I guess, you know, we, we only see Christ doing things, but I think we know it was Christ plus the Father. Well, in our case, it's not just us, but it's us who are trying to be in the image of Christ plus Christ, plus the Holy Spirit that can get things done. And, you know, if you ever feel like, oh, well, I just, I absolutely cannot do Whatever it is, you know, I can't do anything about that. Uh, I think that I think it's time for us to to stop and and take stock of what it is that we actually um, have. Uh, it's time for us to to start praying uh, to God, to Christ, for the things that that we need to be able to to solve whatever problem it is. Uh, and I think that it I think that it uh, you know a lot of times we want to just dismiss the problem. And I think if we do that, uh, Jesus is going to say, no, no, don't, don't just dismiss the problem. That doesn't make the problem go away. You know, you may, you may, you may send it off, but that doesn't solve the problem. Uh, you take care of it because that's what he says. That's what he says here. And I think that we need to understand that that's our call is that when Jesus gives us a problem, when Jesus uh, recognizes that there is something we need to do, um, that we need to uh, be willing uh, to to answer that call that Jesus has for us. Our uh, story for today that will be our um, our uh, devotion for tomorrow, I guess, if you will, is uh, again going to be out of Matthew fourteen, uh, and this is another boat story. Only this time. This is the story of Jesus walking on water. And so before we go to that, let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Holy God, we do thank you for uh, the reminder today uh, that in order for us to be like Jesus, uh, we have to, num number one, I think we have to face problems. We have to recognize that as Christians, we're called uh, to deal with the problems of the world. Um, you know, when, when Jesus was on this earth, the problems, he didn't have to go find the problems. The problems came to him. And, and maybe at times we may have to go find the problems, uh, but, but we're, we're called like Christ. We're called to, 
to be people that, that want to work, uh, to solve the problems of the world. Help us to, um, to recognize that we have within us greater ability than we can ever imagine. Um, we may not be able to do anything alone, uh, but we know that, that with Christ, we can do all things. Uh, and just help us to approach every problem that we have like that. Not, uh, not uh, we don't help us to not have a problem and then say, well, this is what I, I need to do and, 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 and try to work on doing it alone. Help us instead start with prayer uh, to, to God and to Christ about, you know, okay, here's the problem. Uh, reveal to me, uh, reveal the resources I have. Reveal to me what it is you want me to do. Reveal it to me how you're going to help at work in this problem. And then, and then, you know, help me to do the things that you want me to do about this. Because uh, when we do those things, we are more and more like Christ. As we read now the story of, of our Savior walking on water, uh, help us to uh, help us to hear uh, what you say to us this day out of this very story. Uh, you know, we we may never uh, walk on water, but that does not mean that, that a story doesn't speak to us. Send your Holy Spirit now to open our eyes and our hearts that we might hear uh, what you say to us this very day about this very story. For it's in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. And this is actually immediately after the, the story with the, the feeding of the 5,000. Um, Jesus has, uh, I'm trying to get this where I can kind of look up a little bit at least. Um, they have fed the 5,000 people, in, in addition to that's 5,000 men, in addition to women and children, there was all these leftovers. Uh, when that is done, it says immediately, and that's, I mean, uh, this is one of those things that Matthew, Matthew does a lot, is there's a lot of immediately, uh, you know, there's no wasting time. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. So, so this is one of those where, the, you know, the first time we read about the, the, the crossing of the sea, it was he was in the boat with them. This time he's put them in the boat and, and told them to head off and that he'll get there, right? Um, and he stays to dismiss the crowd. He wasn't, he's not afraid of the crowd. He's not, he's not, you know, I, and I think to some extent maybe the disciples are. You know, they're, the crowd's a little unpredictable and the crowd doesn't necessarily always do what they want them to do. Uh, Jesus, on the other hand, is, is at, well at ease with the crowd. And he dismisses them and they go. After he dismissed the crowd, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. And, and I would say this may be the continuation of that grief response from the death of John. When evening came, he was there alone. By this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land. So he, could, he was sort of up on a hill. He could see... It says it says mountain, but in in their area it's more hills than that. It's kind of like here in Oklahoma for the most part. Um, and he can see the boat, and it is being battered by the waves, and it's far from land, for the wind is blowing against it. They're having trouble making any progress because of the wind. Early in, and early in the morning, so the he's been there through the night, and he's now into the early morning, probably still dark. He came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. I think we understand that's a fairly common kind of response. I don't, I've been on, I've been on boating trips and I've never had anybody walk up to my boat on the water, even in good times. So I can understand being pretty freaked out. And they cried out in fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And so they're going to recognize, I mean, he, he identifies himself. And, you know, he doesn't say it's Jesus, he says it's I, they know who I is. And so, you know, they recognize him. Then Peter, and Peter is the one that always, he, he's the first to speak. Um, and uh, sometimes he's impetuous and 
and sometimes he's right on the spot and sometimes he completely misses the mark, but he's almost always the first one to speak. And he answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So now notice that, that in this case, Jesus has says, take heart, it's I, do not be afraid. And I feel certain they recognize his voice. And when he says it is I, they recognize him, but, but it's, it's still not making sense, right? Because Peter's still not clear. And so now he wants, he wants a sign, right? He, he wants a proof that if it is I, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Call me to come. And Jesus said, come. So Peter got out of the boat. He steps out of the boat and started walking on the water, just like Jesus was. And he came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, and, and um, there are, uh, there's another translation, and, and I think maybe it's just a different translation, uh, but that it is uh, when he saw the wind, which I think is interesting to, to see wind. Uh, wind isn't something you see, but, but he noticed it. I mean, the wind that is whipping the waves, he, he, he and, and, and what that seems to imply is that he had been focusing on Jesus, but now his focus shifts off and, and he notices that the wind is strong and the waves are coming up. He became frightened and he began to sink and he cried, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. So this is the story of Jesus and Peter walking on the water. As you think about this, um, I want you to think about uh, maybe three things. Uh, Jesus on the mountain before, you know, on the mountain talking to God. And what do you think? What do you think he's talking about? Like, what do you think the conversation is about? Um, then, when then at the beginning of the story, when we see that uh, you know the the disciples are in the boat and things are not going well and. And, and, and Jesus comes to them, I almost, I almost get the feeling out of a fog, almost, right? Um, and they, they think it's a ghost. Um, what do you think that the, the disciples, when Jesus says, take heart and desire, do not be afraid. What do you think the disciples' response was to that? Uh, I think it's a, a, an interesting question in my mind. Uh, and uh, uh, I want you to think about that. Um, and then, and then think about this, this interaction with Peter. Um, you know, we, we, we hear the story and then Jesus's take on the story is, oh, you of little faith. Think about that. And, and what does that say about you and I? What does that say about you as someone trying uh, to become more and more like Christ every day. Uh, what does it say about how we should live our lives? Um, I think though that's a good place to stop. I think that we are um, making good progress. Uh, and, and I think that this story of Jesus walking on water is a great way for us uh, to think about uh, uh, how much, how much real faith in Jesus do we have? How much uh, what, what's the likelihood that we would take and step out of the boat? Uh, think about that. Think about that as you, as you reread this, as you uh, pray about it, uh, ruminate on it, as you, as you kind of let it, let it stew in your mind. Uh, and then we'll, I'll talk again tomorrow. Pray that you have a blessed day. Uh, this is Wednesday. Uh, have U and W meeting in a little while. And then I've got, uh, children and youth tonight. So, I just pray that you might have a blessed uh, afternoon and evening and, and a great day. And I'll be back on in the morning. And God bless.